Welcome everybody to the VDM. I'm so excited to have you all here. My name is Emma Shubin. Me along with my colleagues, Stephen Neely and Veronica Bolevsky, we host these wonderful virtual Doc Rose meetups. This is meetup number 57. And we are here today to do a little remembering of our teachers. Um, but first, we always like to do a little breakout room um, to introduce ourselves. I don't usually have to do this part of things, so you'll bear with me here for a moment while I get that set up. Um, looks like we've got nine of us, so I'll put like three to a room. Usually say who, who you are, where you're from, who you teach, and then I'll bring you guys back. We do it pretty quickly, so you don't have too much time to, to linger, but enough time to wish you knew just a little bit more about each other. Um, and let me see, we'll do... Okay, here we go. Are you guys ready? And then you'll come back in a couple minutes and as people come in, I'll send them out your way. So here we go. Good luck, everyone. See you in a few moments. You should be getting something right now, I hope. Welcome back. Still shouting in other rooms. <laughs> They're coming back. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so Giovanna, who do you have there with you? She's uh, Giuseppina Mastrodilli. Giuseppina, it's very good to meet you. I'm Emma. Welcome. Nice to meet you. We are still in school where we teach in, uh, in, uh, in a music school in the afternoon. And then uh, so we decided to connect it together to tonight, this evening. Wonderful. So running back and forth. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I hope you had enough time, but not too much time to say hello to everybody and learn a little bit about each other. Um, it's one of the, my favorite things about the VDM is that we get to create a little community here together. And um, I'm just going to put one more time our agenda in the chat so that you guys can click there if you would like to see kind of the order of events for this afternoon. Um, so a few little bit of announcements. We have an upcoming masterclass this weekend coming up with Cynthia, Cynthia Lilly. Um, and we're just so excited to have her. You don't want to miss Cynthia. It's on April 22nd or April 23rd, depending on where you are in the world. She's going to be doing a little class on a journey through Brahms's variations on a theme by Haydn. And then after that, we'll have Kai Liu, which you also will not want to miss. Then we have a short course coming up on Latin American music taught by Elda, who's come and done some things with us before. You definitely don't want to miss an opportunity either. She's absolutely lovely. Hey, Joe, how's it going? Welcome, everybody. Good to see you all. Um, I'll put this one more time in the chat. Here's our agenda. Boom. So I'm flying solo today. So you'll have to forgive me if I don't do things in the proper order. As my colleagues and I always are working together, we catch each other. So hopefully I will not have missed anything by the end. But I'm very excited that we're here today to do a special class on lessons from our teachers. We're doing a series of these throughout this next while for VDM. And today we're going to be honoring the lessons and legacy of Luisa Di Senyi. I hope I didn't terribly say pronounce her name. And so Louisa's students are here today and they're going to be sharing stories, activities, and memories, as well as some of the lessons they've learned along the way of this amazing, inspiring, legendary woman in our field. So I'm just, I'm very excited. And so today I know we're going to be starting with Issa and I do have some videos to share and I'm just not sure, Issa, if you want me to start with a video or if you had a few things you want to say or Christine, I know you're helping us kind of keep the whole ship, ship um, no, 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 you're starting, you're starting with me. Isa is still in the car. Uh -huh. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. So I'm going to, without further ado, turn this over to Christine. We each will have a few minutes, but we're kind of, we have a little bit of a different structure today so that we can accommodate listening to everybody and hearing all the different things to be shared. So thank you all. Okay. Hey, Anthony. All right. It's all of you, Christine. 
Okay. Um, all right. I'm just going to give it. Try to give a short introduction. I always talk too much. I'll try not to. Uh, so Louisa Disegni Jaffe. She was the honorary president of the um, Italian um, Dow Crows Association for for many years. Uh, I first met her. I think it was about eight years ago, and uh, she passed away in in 2019. I knew her much less than uh, than the other presenters here. Um, one of them, you'll see, Giovanna has known her since she was two years old, actually. And um, but she made a really profound impression on me. I won't tell a lot about her history. You can read about that in other places. But she was she was born in Switzerland. She got her license in uh, in London, and then she went back to Geneva for the, the diploma. <laughs> I'm not sure when she first came to Italy, if it was in the 60s or the 70s. I think it was probably in the 60s. And it was, it was many, many years ago. And um, <clears throat> just to give you an idea of, uh, Dow Cross was, was virtually unknown then, as were really any active methods at all. And um, I just wanted to give you one quote from her. And this is from 2011. So you can imagine what she found many years ago. In 2011, in an interview, she says, I quote, generally speaking, musical studies in Italy are similar to the situation Jacques Dalcroze found more than a century ago in the Geneva Conservatory. <laughs> okay, and that was in 2011. So you can imagine what she found in uh, the 60s and the 70s. So she was uh, uh, instrumental in bringing Dalcroze to, uh, to Italy and uh, the training of many teachers and um, uh, the inspiration for for more than one generation, and uh, you know things are changing now. I don't want you to get the impression that Italy is so backwards now. It's changing. I think still kind of slowly, but it is. And, and they have uh, there are Dal Crow's uh, Eurythmics courses in um, in I don't know if in many, but in quite a few conservatories. For example, in the Conservatory in Rome, where um, that that Isa, our one of our presenters, teaches. So I first met Luisa at a, at a seminar. I had already gotten my certificate in, 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 in ORF and I was studying Kodai and I'd heard of Dal Crows. I just knew it was music and movement and I thought it was folk dance or something. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. And, and uh, Isa was not at all what I expected, you know, for someone's gonna teach her to dance. I mean, she was very elderly then and very frail looking. And I thought, wow, she's gonna teach us to dance. So, and she just said, everybody walk. And I said, what? So everybody walked. And then she, after a while, she started to follow it on the piano. And I realized, I know this is a, a normal Dow Cross activity. So it's not that it was anything unusual, but I don't know, somehow it was at the right time in my life to hear it, or it was the way that she said it, the way that she did it. But it was like this light turned on in me. And I really, I literally almost burst into tears. And it completely changed my life just then. And um, I really, there's, there's so much I can tell you about just that first lesson with her and there's in time, so, so I won't. But she was instrumental in encouraging me to do the training in spite of the many doubts I had in, in my abilities. And um, she was so happy when she found out that I decided to do it. And when I did get my certificate, I got it just shortly after she died. And I wish so much that I could have, I could have told her that I did it, I did it. But um, I wanted to tell you just <clears throat> very quickly, just um, a couple of activities, just one really show you. I don't know if anybody got the potato chip can. Did any of you <laughs> get it that was that uh, was written on there? No. Okay, well, I don't think it will work on, on online anyway. But she, she used a lot of, um, we'll tell you about too. And in this first lesson, she had this potato chip can and probably doesn't work online, you probably can't hear it anyway, but there's three different sounds on the top, on the side, and on the bottom. And so she had us make up, um, she even said to keep the paper inside because it makes a better sound and what brand to get. But um, she had us make up patterns with these three different um, sounds. And then um, so you could use one or two or three of them and not thinking so much of the rhythm, not as you would think more in ORF, you know, like making some kind of rhythm with it, but just the sound, the, the timbre of it. And, um, and then we would turn our backs and each one would make up uh, a pattern using one or two or three sounds. And we had to guess 
uh, what it was. And um, anyway, that's just one example of many uses that she makes made of objects. And the other thing briefly, I just wanna say that my first experience in piano improvisation, uh, when I started to do the training, Louisa wasn't one of our regular teachers. She was quite frail at the time, but she came just once, I think. And uh, she showed up with this sweater on. Emma, could you show that photo now of the uh, this sweater that, <laughs> that, uh, that Louisa was wearing that uh, we just thought, you know, how cool this is, but uh, we didn't really suspect what this was for, you know, and then, um, she did some other activities and we then we she had us go to the piano and she said okay choose one of these or more of these designs and and play them and we just kind of went what <laughs> and uh, you know i particularly was very intimidated by improvisation and some of the others were too but she was just so encouraging and so enthusiastic about every just tiny little clumsy tentative to play. I mean, everything was, was great with her. And I just wanted to say that, that she's, you know, for improvisation, she has encouraged so many people. She's written articles on them. She has a very interesting article about, um, about improvisation and how to make it simple and, or at least to make it feasible. If someday you guys want, I could translate it for you. And uh, to conclude, there is a, I just wanted you to hear then a video of one of our colleagues, uh, Laura Di Polito, made playing, Uh, is a sweater. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so thank you. And so now uh, uh, Giovanna Martinelli would like to um, share her experiences. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Um, I'm Giovanna Martinelli, and um, I, I consider myself a very lucky person because I met Luisa Di Segni when I was only two because uh, Luisa Di Segni used to teach in my nursery school and I used to go there and she was my music teacher, which is, it's amazing from that time. First, having a music teacher in a nursery school and second, having her as a music uh, teacher because she, uh, of course, she, she was an amazing uh, uh, music teacher and was a, um, I was lucky because then after the school, my mother decided to take us all, um, my brothers and sister, uh, to have lesson, private lesson with her. So basically, I, I've grown up with her musically. So I've been studying music uh, through the cross method for all my life. So till I start, I started teaching music and I went to the I, I took her place in the school where I met her so it's it's like a um, a circle and uh, for me it's it's the only experience that I had for a music training so what I usually say is I teach the cross because this is the only thing I can do because this is the only way I can do it because I've been absorbing the cross method with uh, with Luisa and I've grown up with the with this method so I I consider myself very very lucky so Luisa was a kind of a second mother for me because uh, my life uh, from two years old to 18 was with her for twice a week because I do I, I've done a Eurythmics with her and also I start I started also studying uh, piano with her not in a classical, not in a classic way, but in Luisa Disegni's way, which <laughs> is a, which is a improvisation and um, 
hearing the music, listen to the music, try to find a way uh, to play different music uh, and also absorbing all the experience of uh, Luisa. So I consider it, it, my life in the musical training was uh, very, very lucky. And um, I want to underline something that um, Christine said about Luisa's ability to uh, encourage all uh, her students to find their own way to improvise with everything. She used to come at lesson not only with a um, um, chips box, but also with a lot of different things and encourage you and uh, stimulate you to do something. What, what, what she, she used to say is do it, just do it. Even if you were stopping and wondering, what, what can I do with this? And she said, do it, go, 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 always. And without thinking, this is, was the um, amazing thing that she, um, the way she was, she was, she used to teach. And um, I want to uh, share with you a video when uh, you can see me as a child. And uh, this is a video from the eighties and uh, it's a program, a TV program uh, from Rai and uh, Scuola Musica Educazione was sì. something like this. And, um, I, I must confess she she didn't like very much these videos because they are they're not very natural, but exactly. it was a program. So but you can see in this video how can she um, she could encourage us. Uh, so me and my mates to improvise with any kind of objects you, you will see. So uh, I, if you can um, play it, Emma. And then Giovanna, do you want the whole thing or just part of it? Let's see. I mean, do we have time to see this? Is six minutes. Do I think we have that time we, to we see might, that? but maybe not. Okay. Um, Christine, I we... think it's quite interesting. <laughs> so we'll go for about three, and then we'll we'll see how we're doing for time. Okay. Okay. Facciamo ora improvvisazioni su oggetti, cioè che ritmo può venire fuori da un oggetto. Allora abbiamo un percorso qui di cerchi. Voi fate l'andata, poi guardate e al ritorno sonorizziamo con, il, con questi bottiglioni. Dino, vuoi provare tu? Calotta. Adesso voi mi raccogliete i cerchi e me li date ognuno alla sua maniera e voi vi preparate per le palle canguro. Eh, Carlotta, hai un'idea di come portarmi? Donata? Sì? Alessandra? Dino? Sì. 
Sì. Tocca a voi. Allora, eh, Edoardo, vuoi cominciare tu? Cosa puoi fare col canguro? Vieni qua. Giovanna. Adesso prendiamo i bottiglioni. Totally amazing. Okay, so I will finish it at the end, I promise. Okay, you could see how it was, I mean, improvising with everything. And also we were talking with the Giuseppina that even anything you uh, were using in the lesson, you have to bring it back in a way. So, and she told me, and everything, it's it's all the lesson, even if you give something to a, a kid and then do something and you bring it to me in a, in your own way, and then you have your lesson. <laughs> Easy. Okay. I I think I <laughs> thank you. Thank you so uh, much. We are really very grateful. Um so let me uh, Isa. Okay, Isa or Guido. 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 Okay, um after Christine and Giovanna's words and video. I think it's clear that uh, here in Italy, we had uh, an incredible opportunity to study work, uh, simply be with someone that was very, very special. I'm a Guido Gavazzi and uh, thanks for this opportunity because uh, it's a, a really a pleasure for me to talk about uh, Luisa. She has uh, fundamentally changed my relationship with music and uh, in particular with uh, teaching. I met Luisa when uh, I was uh, already an adult. I wasn't so lucky as uh, Giovanna. <laughs> and uh, Luisa was uh, an elegant woman, I think in uh, maybe her 60s. Teen, always with a smile, but also with uh, an inner strength that you could feel. And of course, a big passion for teaching and uh, the cross. It's very difficult to talk in a few minutes uh, about a person you have known for many years uh, and uh, who has uh, influenced your life uh, in uh, such an important way. So I thought I'd uh, just tell you about uh, two aspects of uh, Luisa. The first one was uh, what uh, I called it and then, this was because Louise, Louisa had the ability to start a lesson with very, very little. It could be an object, is a, we talk later about this. It could be a jar, a can, a sheet of paper, or simply with a movement. And with that, she would build an incredible lesson full of, uh, of uh, activities that were always uh, similar, but different. Activities that uh, included rhythm, solfa, and uh, improvisation, all together. All together, but uh, with uh, different accents. She uh, suggested one uh, activity, and then another, and then another, and then another, and then another, always with the, the the first object, 
uh, all this uh, without uh, ever finishing. After a while, uh, she would ask uh, to propose something and uh, we try. But uh, after a while, when uh, we had uh, run out of uh, ideas, uh, she would take our suggestion and start again for, well, for hours, all days. Then when we were tired, sure that there was no chance of inventing some, something different, typically she would say, what if we did the same movement in two or three people? <laughs> and it started again without end. It was very incredible. Incredible for me because I, had, I have a background completely different academic and uh, to start with a jar and uh, work all day with the rhythm of solfa improvisation was completely new. The uh, second aspect I'd like to talk about uh, is uh, different uh, and uh, doesn't uh, only concern Luisa as a teacher, but uh, more specifically as a person. She was a very, very generous as a person and uh, as a teacher. And it is, this is not very common. I will try to explain better. It was not strange that uh, after becoming uh, Dal Croce teacher, we uh, received uh, a, phone from, uh, a phone call from Luisa. Sorry, Guido, uh, someone called me for a workshop, but uh, I'm too tired. And then I think you would be the right man for that group. Would you like that? And uh, that's not just with me. She could have called another one because she had a particular feeling for music therapy or another one because she was more, I don't know, academic or just, you know, I think it's better if you go. And so for many of us, you can well understand how this, uh, this attitude of her was very unusual. Many teachers are jealous of their work and hardly leave room for others. But Luisa was completely different, completely. In my opinion, she was first and foremost simply generous. But then there was also something else. She was also very deep, completely concentrated about spreading Del Cruz. So problem is sending her students around knowing that we could ask for advice before and after our workshops, gave her the peace of mind that after all, one day, perhaps even without her fantastic personality, we would still be able to continue spreading the cross. So now it's our turn and I hope we will not disappoint Lisa. Thank you for listening. I finish. I think that now, <laughs> thanks. I think that uh, now we could have uh, another better idea of what uh, she could do with the, the example that uh, now Isa will show us. Thanks. I hope you do. Take <laughs> <laughs> sure. care. A little bit what uh, Luisa did with an object, very strange. Uh, Emma, how many minutes I have? We usually say five, but you know, a little bit more is okay, no problem. It's very, very short time. Okay, it's let's try. Time to do some talking back and then I'm sure we'll revisit some things and there's more space. Okay, for let's try to... Uh, be, I, excuse me, Emma, ah. Emma. I Excuse me, I, I told Veronica that Isa would be a bit longer, that she'd be about 10, because yeah. she's going to try to do an activity with us. Okay, great. Okay. Um, my English is so very slow. Can. I'm very, very sorry. Okay, uh, I met Luisa in 1994, uh, when I was 28, and I loved um, her creativity, her capacity to show that we could find music every, everywhere in everything all around us in space 
in place very places very strange uh, where usually the music we didn't see and didn't find. Uh, it was very usual in her teaching that uh, she used this used the um, recycle uh, objects as uh, bottles or uh, cans or uh, uh, cardboard tubes. Um, but for her, um, they were tools to be uh, to become. Uh, more conscious of uh, space and of the um, relationship between the space and the time. Um, tonight, I'd like to show, to tell you um, the main points of, of one of the lessons that I found very, very amazing the first time uh, she gave us. Um, maybe we could, uh, um, to be uh, students together, could you find, could you uh, make movements with me? Uh, what do you think? It is possible, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, the, uh, so, uh, let's try to do um, uh, linear movements with your uh, body. Could you stand up, please? And put vocal sounds. And could you turn on the microphone so that we can listen to each other? Please. Thank you very much. It is not it is not going to be syn synchronized, eh? but anyway. No, 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 no. It it don't we don't know. We don't want to in this this in this time, please. Okay. Okay. Rrr. Wonderful. Okay. And now try to do uh, something more curved. Okay. And now we can mix them. Thank you. And now another thing. Let's do six little pulsations in different uh, directions. Chum chum chin chum chin. Bum 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 bum. And make vocal sounds even here. But now, yes, okay. Thank you. And now turn off your microphones because I ask you to uh, to do it with the piano, my piano. Okay, follow my piano. Thank you very much. I look at you and try to play the six little positions.
Luisa, non sentiamo. No? We can't we can hear anything. Oh. Put the original sound. Yes, oh, yes. Luisa, just check your original sound and then we should be yes. good to go. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Is it okay? okay. It sounds like it's on now. Thank you. This is the American size. <laughs> <laughs> I brought enough for the whole class. Thank you. Actually, we need this kind of egg carton. So if you don't have it, let's imagine and uh, touch every of these little points and make a vocal sound in which and try to change the direction and follow follow me with your voice and your hand in an imaginary imaginary yes Guido you have the the carton but I don't know if the American people or Francoise ciao Francoise <laughs> you don't have it okay change change Tira tira dara pam pam change tira tam tira tam pam pam stop and now let's try to uh, group with the feet every two or every three uh, in the depending in depending from the direction of the questa cosa qui come si chiama? The carton. The carton. <ride> Xbox. Yes. Allora, Xbox. Uh, are you ready with your feet? feet? Yes, thank you, Greece. And thank you, everyone. And we divide, we group, we are going to group every three. Yam, ta, tim, pam, ta, ra, ri, ra, yam. Ta, ta, ti, ra, yam, change, ti, ra, ram, 
Pam pam tam pam ti ra ra ta ti ra ta ta tam. So we are going uh, uh, through a m more uh, deep conscious consciousness awareness of the difference in two meters. Uh, let's go uh, without this or with this in uh, in one hand and uh, try to follow the piano and um, attention to the change changes let's begin grouping uh, every three was that we um, she asked the, us about the, our our impressions uh, our um, impressions about the differences between the two meters six eight and three four uh, about the the space the direction and the uh, it was very curious to find the link between the beginning of the lesson or about the linear or curved movements and three and uh, three four and six eights and um, it was very interesting uh, the use of this object to realize that the six little points are at the same value but the different way of grouping makes a big big uh, change in the character of the two measures and the end of the lesson was usually that we uh, were in a big circle and we were divided in two in three groups the A group did the uh, six eight eights uh, uh, group A did the, the uh, uh, an accent every two and the C group uh, made made an accent every three so we can we could listen uh, two against three in a very natural way, and it is it was very fascinating to me. I think uh, that uh, all the uh, dark Russian community uh, in Italy was very fascinated fascinated by this. Uh, a game of Luisa and when uh, she was 80 we organized a big party a big celebration and we 
eh, um, non so come si dice gave we gave her uh, gave, as a gift as a present gave her a, a gift uh, that was a silver come si dice you can pendant. see it in a picture actually Luisa uh, um, yes. Isa, because we saw it and uh, if you Emma if you put again a picture of her with a with a with a jumper that you shared with us at uh, the beginning she uh, actually she's wearing the the gift that we we gave her it's a sort of necklace with the shape of uh, the egg box yes <laughs> Yes, and we gave her this uh, little gift, um, playing and moving six, eight, and three, four, and she was very, very surprised and very happy to to receive this gift from us, from all, all of us. It was a summer course. Unbelievable. So Thank you very much. To get to hear. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Issa, and everybody for sharing all these amazing memories. We've done it again. We're here at 10 minutes before the end of our time together. So I wanted to leave some space for questions. And if there's anything else that I'm forgetting to share or um, Christine will help me be on track here. But um, please, if there's any questions, now is a good time. And then that'll give opportunities to share more. Thank you all. This is beautiful and very fascinating to hear from other master teachers. Yes, Francoise, please. Yes, thank you very much. It's really nice to see Luisa again and to see what she did in Italy. It's very interesting for us to know how much, how important she was in, in this whole development of Del Crow's method. I would like to see the end of the video if it was possible. I would too. Just Is that Does that agree those, with everybody? I am here as well, but are there any other questions before we go there? Okay, let's do it. We have time. <laughs> um, give me a moment. It always takes a second here. I apologize. I thought I had it pulled up, but we shall see. One moment. While I'm doing that, does anyone else have anything they'd like to ask or share? Please feel free, especially as I awkwardly get my way back there. Hang on one moment. Well, I was really amazed how Luisa could improvise with the same chord, um, chord uh, progression for several totally different rhythms and how she could just observe once and then the second time she was right away with the with the children which is such a beautiful feeling for the child to feel recognized and listened to and watched so it's it's really beautiful and she doesn't change so much at the piano but she changes the rhythm and that's really really amazing i loved seeing that i just have to say how amazed i was at that tiny little girl the things that she made up that was uh, i've never seen a little girl do something like that before that was really incredible Come on. <laughs> well i'm just so remarkable the amount of facility she had for such yeah for such a very young age she was very specific and very precise and so here we are, we left off with the little bouncing balls. I've shared some sound. We'll see the end of this and then we'll go to the next thing. Like this is me. Adesso prendiamo i bottiglioni. E vediamo cosa viene fuori dai bottiglioni. Um, Margherita. Carlotta. Boy. 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 
Donata. Margherita. È più tondo, anche il sonoro. Dino? Alessandra. Giovanna. Edoardo. Abbiamo fatto tutti? Silvia. Allora, tutti insieme e poi smettiamo piano piano. E lentamente sbucciamo. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you so very much to everybody for today. Yes, Francoise, please. Yes, I just wanted to add before also that those children have many ideas because they are always asked to do things. And I think they develop such a confidence in their own creativity because everything seems interesting in, in Louisa's uh, eyes. And, and um, there is a lot of open openness and of respect and of uh how do you say stimulation you know to, so those children there are no not two children who do the same they all have their own ideas and i'm sure that it comes from this habit of of louisa just to open up all kinds of fields of creativity it's a it's a very nice lesson for any teacher i think thank you I could not agree more, Francoise. I already am excited to take some of these ideas to my own world. Um, we have one more minute if there's any other comments. Before... I just want to add that um, this video will be soon um, available in our uh, YouTube channel because we want to upload it, but I have to do the subtitle in English, so it's going to be a longer work. And uh, that's all. And, and the, yes, I, I want to say it again. This was a TV program. For, so it wasn't an improvisation just there. Um, and I mean, we, it was a, a little bit organized, of course. But as bit. you said, Francoise, we were very well trained, trained because we, been, we, we used to work with Luisa twice a week. So doing all this kind of yeah. uh, stuff with uh, any different kind of material. And... Uh, uh, for her, everything was always meraviglioso. She used to say <laughs> meraviglioso on anything we used to uh, used to do. So you're right. She was always uh, encouraging us and uh, stimulate us to do and do and do and do because everything was fine. Everything was good with her. Thank we you don't think you have something to add. I saw that you. No, I was just thinking that this video was uh, in uh, television maybe 50 years ago. In oh. the, in the I, 18, I, 19, I know the, the other teachers, when uh, they see what uh, Luisa uh, was doing, uh, their thoughts. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, did, I, did, I did have a little question for you as being one of her students. In those two times that you would see her, was one class more focused on improvisation while another class was focused in a different area? Or was it all kind of you exploring this whole world of... But I mean, the, the lessons were very fluent. They, as, a, as a Guido was saying, as a Isa was saying, she started from a little thing and in the lesson she used to include 
everything, solfa, improvisation, movement, everything was merged together. So you- Pedagogy. Yeah, exactly. You, you we even, even didn't, um, you couldn't realize what you were doing. You were just oh. doing something and then, and then yes, you, you understood the music. Well, I cannot believe we are here, friends, but we're at the top of the hour. This has been amazing, especially for those of us who may not have known her teaching. We are so grateful to our friends from Italy for coming and sharing this beautiful work with us and this memory. Um, it's so important, and this is how we continue this tradition and learning from each other, and it's a big reason why we wanted to create this virtual Dalkers meetup space. And so I just wanted to say we have master classes coming up. We have our free and please welcoming to all our, our meetups that we have every other week. If anyone ever needs assistance or help to make it to one of our master classes, that's where Integral Steps comes in, which is the um, nonprofit that I help run. And we are always here to support. We've never turned a friend away. And we want new people in these rooms. And we are just so proud and grateful to have such an amazing community. So I just wanted to say thank you all. And I hope that you have a good night or an afternoon, wherever you're coming from. And thank you, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Thank you so much. A tutti. Sì. Thank yeah, you, John. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, a presto. Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, Sergio.